Well, I mean, we've been in, we've been with them for two weeks in the meeting room, so you know you've gotten over the the uh, hadn't seen them in a while and getting back together. But it's always good to go out on the field. I mean, that's where we do most of our work, and um, the excitement from them is always good. You can feed off of that, and it was just to get together as a group out there on the field. It's it's pretty cool. What were your feelings on the draft? Uh, they went defensive again, but uh, to us they said that you kind of told them, hey, you went defensive again. Uh, what were your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, the Gus, I don't know what he's done. He must be paying Tom off on the side or something. I, it's uh, two years in a row. But, uh, you know, I think that uh, we've got a number of guys offensively that have been here, and you know, we feel good about where we are. So I think that in evaluating – I mean, I know there were a number of different guys that they talked with us about during the draft, and you just never know how it's going to fall. So um, it doesn't matter. You know, we just – we go. And I think one of the things that's been really good about our team is that we've had guys – stand up and make plays or develop. You know, like Sam Tevy was a seventh round pick and then or sixth round pick and then he's played pretty well for us. You know, you look like at Tyrell, we lost him in free agency this year, but he was an undrafted free agent that's come in here and and been productive. So um, you know, I, I feel really good about the two guys that we got and uh, we're excited to see how they progress. But we're also excited to see we got a number of young guys like Forrest Lamb, like Dylan, like Justice Liggins, guys that, you know, that, and Artavis that have been here that we're excited about seeing how those guys do as well. Last year during training camp, Artavis was having a good camp for uh, her bad knee uh, issue. What do you think you're going to bring to the team this year now that he uh, is fully healthy? Well, hopefully he's a little bit more mature in the league. You know, he, he's, an, he's, he's not an older player. But, you know, when you have a young guy like that that, uh, you know, he's, he's – wanting to try to prove himself and do some things. That's really what it's all about when you're not drafted like he was. And he was making strides at that. But he's been around it. He understands how we operate now. He understands where he can fit in from a standpoint of expectations of whether he can play all the different spots and what he can do. Now it's just a question of showing us that, which he was doing last year before he got injured. So I'm really excited to see how he progresses this spring. You know, we, uh, he obviously wasn't one of the guys that we looked at early because um, he looked at some of the guys at the top four or five that came off the board just because there was a lot of hype or a lot of their grades were higher. But um, when we saw him, because you go through and you evaluate him, uh, it stood out some of the things that he did in the pocket, you know, some of the way he handled the line of scrimmage, some of the things that they do, which is a more conventional offense as opposed to some of the spread offenses that you see in college football now and how he handled that was pretty impressive. He was good in the pocket. He could move around. He could throw from the pocket. Did a nice job with his play actions. Um, you know, he was accurate with his throws, made some good throws down the field. And, um, you know, obviously he'd made some plays where he extended them, whether it was moving out of the pocket or running with the ball. And, you know, it's really hard to ignore, what, 49 and 3? over three years or whatever his time was there. It's very impressive. So um, we had him in here for one of the 30 visits. And, um, you know, I think we saw him throw, but we, we'd seen him throw. But bringing him in here and talking about football, uh, it, was, it was really good. Is he a Heisman guy, how the league takes the guys they think? Is he that kind of athlete? Or is he like the Hill kid, player? like Taysom Hill for yeah. – you know what? I, I don't know. I think what, what – uh, what, what's important to us right now is to see where he can advance or how he can advance as a quarterback. Uh, I think you have to do that before you think about something like the role that you're talking about. I mean, I, I just it's hard to think that you're just going to plug somebody into that role and think he can do it without really learning the basics of having to play quarterback. Because if he does, then you know how do you how does he fit in in the active game day picture? So, you know, there's a lot of those things with consideration. He's an athlete. He, he does a lot of good things athletically on the field, which you see him do. But we are excited to see him play the quarterback position and see how he can develop at that. Only because they came from the same school, can you draw any comparisons to Lent? It's funny that we, we went in there a couple of years ago and talked with Carson and uh, was very impressed with him. And Easton was the same way. I mean, I think they do a great job there at North Dakota State with their program and how they coach these young men. And, and you know, their success obviously um, shows that. 
but uh, you know, just the, the quality that he showed from a standpoint of preparation, what he understood football-wise, um, you know, talking about all the different things you have to do at this level. We sat in here and sent him a packet. We sent him a packet with some things, and when he came in, you know, we quizzed him on it. And we did something a little bit different this time. Usually we'll ask him specific questions about plays in the packet, and this time we just said, draw everything that you can remember. And usually it's about three plays, you know, three pass plays, a couple of runs. He was very impressive. It's still on the board in there, the – the three plays that he drew up and how detailed they were. You know, and that's for, for a college football player, you know, having to learn something that's a little bit different than what he's done, put the time in and then come back without any notice and be able to put it back up on the board was, it was really impressive. Well, wow, if he can improve off last year, it'll be a really good year. But uh, you know, one of the things that really I think was good last year was he worked very hard in the off season. You know, even not when he was here with us in the this part of it on doing core work, getting in shape, and uh, I think it really paid off. I think he did a great job of that during camp. You could see it with the way he was throwing. And, um, you know, it looks that same way this year. He looked really good today was – seeing him out there on the field and seeing him run around. Um, you know, I think when you get up to that point, 16th year or later in your career, those are the things that you really have to focus on. And I think we have to do a job of making sure that we don't put too many things on him in practice. You know, when you get into the grind of it, um, you always want certain routes. You want to make sure you get a look at it. You get it with the receiver and you work those things. And, you know, those are always important. But he's so competitive, he wants to take all the reps in practice. And, uh, you know, even especially – uh, in training camp, in preseason games. I just think that Coach Lynn's already talked about that, and I think he has the right perspective on making sure we take care of that so that we um, can keep him the way he is right now, which he looks really good, and you know, hopefully we can replicate what we had last year. Yeah, I think that we just we just probably we did that some last year. I mean, there were times we'd go in and, and in the practice week we'd say, okay, which of these plays do you feel like you got to have? And we'd put them on the script and number them, and then we, you know, he wouldn't take them. But even even I think as we go through the spring and even into the summer, I think it's important that you do that. And we tried. To, I mean, we did it last year. That was you know that was something once again Coach Lynn had talked about, and and we and we did that. I just think we got to continue to do that and maybe even do it a little bit more. I mean, what is he doesn't need to throw a stop to Keenan or come back to, to Keenan or Travis all the time, even though he wants to or to Mike, you know. So um, hopefully we can just manage that a little better. But, you know, and I think the biggest thing is later in the season as it goes, you got to stick with that routine of working out so that, so that physically you can handle that. And um, it's always more difficult as you get into the season because your preparation – becomes so much more important and you spend more time doing with that. So we just got to find ways to make that all work a little bit better. But once again, he had a tremendous year last year. And, you know, we hope to have that same kind of year, if not better, this year. And how much longer do you think he can do? Yeah. Um, you know, I, that's not for me to say. I, I, it just looks like there's a lot of guys now that, are, that uh, are doing a good job of taking care of themselves and they're playing at a high level. And, uh, you know, I think it's going to be more about how much longer he wants to do it So because um, he's sharp as he's ever been mentally, and that's a big part of the reason why he's able to handle protections and get the ball out. Um, he's so tough, you know, taking some of the shots that he takes and keeping going. But, uh, you know, I think that's really going to be how about how he feels as much as anything. I just know this, just we all had fun last year. And that's one of the things that really drives you, it excites you when you do that. And we got a lot of our same guys back. We feel good about, you know, some of the things that we did offensively, and, and that's exciting. How's Tyrod look so far? First time we've had him on the field, really, to see him. I've always liked what I've seen of him, you know, as an opponent. Uh, I think he does a good job. We obviously have a number of people here that have been associated with him as a player and seen him do those things. Uh, so I feel like we have a pretty good feel for his demeanor, how he handles things, you know, what kind of leader slash player that he is at that position because it's important. And 
from a standpoint of being in the meeting rooms with him, uh, you know, he's been very impressive. I really like him. He's got a good, the way he goes about his business is very impressive. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to see how he'll do as we go forward. I think it's more over these next couple of weeks, uh, a little bit of review. There may be a couple of new things in there, but we don't really have the time where we sit down and we go over it or we put it in for practice like we do when we get to the OTAs. And I think, you know, there was a number of different concepts that we ran last year that we had a lot of success with. And I think we want to build off of those. So this is a time for us to go back and review some of those and then build off of that, you know, with some of the <coughs> motions, some of the different things that we did. So. I think we'll see more of that as we get into the OTAs, and, and certainly a lot of that as we get into training camp when we're doing our practices. But um, it, it helps that we have a lot of the same guys and we have a good feel for their roles. You know, the biggest thing for us is we got to – who's going to step in and, and fill Tyrell's role? You know, and there's a couple of guys that are players for that, and we're excited to see him do it. And you know, that's a big part of what's fun about this time of year is just seeing how – these players individually handle those things and, and how they can continue to grow. Ken, we haven't had a chance to ask you about the New England game. What you broke that down, your offense smoked you essentially in that game. Uh, what did you learn from them in breaking it down? Why, why did it take you so much work? Well, they're a good team. You know, I think that uh, we uh, obviously didn't play as well as we would have liked to have played, but. We did go down and score the first drive of the game to answer their score. And, uh, you know, but they got up a little bit and they did some things that made it tough for us to for us to handle at that point because when you have a lead, you can play a little bit more recklessly defensively and, you know, and, and it's hard. But, you know, I, I think that we just, it's unfortunate because that's the way our season finished. And, uh, you know, it was a, it was a tough loss, but our guys battled. We came back in the second half and made some plays and did some things that, you know, a response to that I felt like was a good showing by our guys. But there's nothing that takes away the bitterness of losing a game second round in the playoffs. It's just hard. Well, that same defense in the Super Bowl, I don't think they gave up a, a touchdown. Yeah, they played, uh, you know, good credit to them. They played, uh, they played good. We had some opportunities in that game, some we took advantage of and some that we didn't. And, uh, you know, we would uh, we hope to get into that position, not necessarily against that team, if we can get into that position and and learn from it. You know, I think that some of the teams that I've been with that have been really successful, you know, we've been in that situation. We were 15 and one in Pittsburgh and lost in the second round. It was actually a championship game. And then the next year we came back and had to win as a wild card and go all the way through. And I have no doubt that the bitterness of the year before helped us push through that. So um, now we have a team where we have a number of guys that have been in the playoffs and understand that. And I think that if we can get back to that point, they'll remember that, and that'll help us. Was that weather at all that good? No, it really wasn't bad. You know, it was. Uh, we got lucky as a whole on the, on the year last year with the weather. So no, I wouldn't say that was a big deal. You know, you'd have to ask somebody a lot smarter about that than me. You know, when you when you get into that, it's all such a blur because, you know, you go into the week and you play Baltimore after that tough Saturday night loss here against them, and then we played well and managed to win the game, and you're in the second round. and It's just all happening fast, and you're trying to get ready. And so it's hard to, you know, focus or remember that. But, I, I mean, I know that we felt like we were a pretty doggone good football team at the end of the year, and we could play anybody. And, we obviously didn't accomplish what we wanted to. So, you know, I hope that gives us extra motivation this year. Ken, are you interested in how football has evolved? Now, we're seeing in this draft teams are making huge investments in quarterbacks who've only started one year in college. Could, could this be, I think, just like the second kid? Kyler Murray started one year. Dwayne Haskins started one year. What's going on with that? Are the colleges adapting them fast? Well, I think 
you know, the whole game's adapting a little bit, some of the different things that you see teams doing. But um, with the way college offenses are being run now, you're seeing these guys, even though they're one year's players, have tremendous stats. And I think that is a part of the part of what you see. You say, oh my gosh, this guy, um, you know, played really well. He threw for, you know, a gazillion yards and he had this many touchdowns. And, you know, it, it used to be that that would take you three or four years in college to do that because it wasn't as much, there weren't as many plays. You know, they're running 90, 100 plays in a game now. They're throwing for, you know, 700 yards. That didn't used to happen. So part of that, I think, when you see those stats, it makes it easier to think that they've played a lot or they're, they're ready to go. But, you know, as we all know, if you look at the history, it's, it's not really easy for young quarterbacks to make the adjustment to this league because it's a little bit different. And, you know, a lot, some guys have done it, and, you know, there have been many that haven't. So you never know. You know, it's, a, it's an inexact science. But these guys that are coming out now, you know, a lot of them, you can see them make a number of different throws. You can see them do things that you think would transition into the NFL very well. So that's a part of it, I think. With Pipkin, your other offensive draft guy. Um, yeah, other one. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thanks, Gus. Can he, even the quarterback is adjusting. Pretty yeah, no kidding. I can't even get away from that. So, of course, of course, if he does good, Gus is going to try to take credit for that, too. So, <laughs> all right. I mean, Division, division two kid um, sounds like he's got a ton of upside. <laughs> I think when you go through the process of evaluating that position, um, there's a lot of guys that you look at, and you see some guys that play at big schools and they play well, and then you know you 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 go through and you evaluate them, and then you go through and you look at some of the other prospects that are you think good players, and it's a different level of competition, and then you have to make an assessment. You know, how does that translate? Is is this can do you think he can play at this level? And I think one of the things you look at is, you know, how do they move? How are their feet? Um, and then how do they finish plays? And then what happens is I think what really kind of pushes it to the next level is when they'll play in one of these all-star games where they're matched against a better opponent. And then you get a chance to see, okay, can that translate? Because sometimes you don't know and you really are taking a chance based off of working them out or you know meeting with them. And I think for, for Trey what stood out was he played in the East-West game and he did some one-on-ones. You know, they do those drills. And we obviously get a chance to see him. And there was a couple of shots of where he's working for a guy that does an up and under move, and he moves his feet and slides his feet back in and gets his hands on the guys. And you think, wow, that's pretty good for a six foot, six and a half guy, 300 pounder moving like that. You know, and then you see him do some things in the game where um, you look at his technique and how he plays, and you, you say, well, okay, this guy's got a chance, and you like that. But I think the biggest thing is because what you've seen in the you know, against a, every stage of the process where you have some bars that you want him to be sure he can get to that bar over it, he's past that. You know, he's, made, he's, he's passed the test, for lack of a better word, in that situation. I think that was what I think really helped him, helped us feel better about him was what he did in the East-West game and how he moved. And, you know, interviewing him and talking to him, you guys, I'm sure, talked to him. He's a Fine young man, really good guy. And I think one of the other things that is, is helpful for us is we've got, a, we've got a really good culture in our offensive line room. We've got some guys that are pretty good players in this league that have been there, that are good leaders, and they help these young guys. And they create you know, a work ethic, how you go about your business, which helps these young guys. And I look at, I look at Sam, you know, how Sam Tevy has developed. You know, Sam still has got to continue to to grow in Trenton. Trenton started two games and played for us last year. And a big part of that is because of the way those guys are on each other about working their technique and communicating and working together. You know, that that really helps. So we just feel like that he can come in and, you know, he'll fit in with a good group and we'll see how he progress but how he progresses. But a guy with that size and that can move the way he moves, you know, that has shown that he can get his feet in the ground and get his hands on guys. He played some at guard. And, uh, you know, it was impressive to see him do that. He said to us, he says, man, that moves a lot faster inside. Yeah, it does. But it's actually good that you notice that because, you know, it's going to move a lot faster when you get to this level. So, you know, he handled that pretty well. And, and we'll be excited to see how he does when he gets out there.
Well, I mean, we've got some guys, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be good to see Forrest do some things for us this year to practice. I mean, it's nice to see that. And, um, you know, I think Pouncey and uh, Russell kind of fall into that same category of protecting them some rep-wise. So we're going to get to see some different guys in some different spots, you know, and um, that'll be good. And I think, like I said, it's a good group because they all help each other. And um, I think Pat Meyer, our line coach, does a tremendous job. So, uh, you know, it's good to get young talent in here and see how he can do. Well, <laughs> gosh, yeah, that was a while ago, 12 rounds. How about that? I can't even imagine sitting through 12 rounds of it. By the time you get to, I mean, you get to the 12th round, you, they didn't even know who I was probably. So, um, you know, well, I, you know what? I think sometimes it's a lot about who you're around and where you are, and I got lucky. I had Dan Henning it was my coach, and, you know, I kind of fit into what he was trying to do, and it helped me. But I think the biggest thing, you know, the hardest thing for young players, I think, is, is their preparation and understanding the speed of the game and what's being asked of them. And a lot of times, you know, you have players that can help them, coaches that can help them from a technique standpoint. And, you know, that's big with us. That's something that I think we recognize with these guys. But, you know, you got to be willing to take it and try to apply it and use it. And it's not easy, you know. Certainly it's not. But it's not so much about me as it is our guys. I think when you, what you really work hard to do and what Tom and his, and the scouts and that group have done a great job of doing is bringing in the right kind of guys so that you have a good chemistry that you can help these guys grow. I mean, they hold each other accountable, they compete, but you know, the biggest part of that is supporting them, but also calling them out and making sure that, that you're helping them grow. I mean, so, but the guys gotta be willing to work. Young players have got to be willing to work, and they got to understand that, um, you know, if you're not successful, you're not going to be around long. So you got to put the time in. I see more and more young players now with flashcards, which, you know, is a good learning tool for them as far as, especially from the skill position, positions where you're um, having to learn formations and motions and everything like that. But, you know, for the inside guys, the line, it's so much about technique because you're going against such big, strong defensive guys. So all those things come into play. But, um, you know, we've, we've had some success with some of our young guys having to play. And hopefully we can help some of these guys that, that uh, come in later, you know, even free agents, and help them get better. But, you know, I think one of the things, too, with this organization is they're not afraid to play a guy no matter where he was drafted or, or um, you know, even if he was a free agent. Tyrell Williams. With Forrest, uh, he's playing guard. How, how important is developing that at the same time, maybe trying to make him more versatile so he is a little more of an option on the game? Well, well, I mean, I, you know, Forrest is competing to play, not just be an option on game day. So um, he's shown some good things in the limited times that we've seen him. And he really was, was uh, doing a good job at the end of the season. And I certainly wish and a couple of those last games we'd have gotten a chance to get him in. You know, maybe the Denver game, uh, maybe a couple of those games down the stretch. But we just didn't the way it worked out, you know, because of the game day active numbers. So um, he's a talented player, and I'll be excited to see him this spring as we go forward, and especially this summer. And, you know, I, he played some tackle in college. And, uh, you know, I think we got to see him at this gu at guard and see what he can do. But I'm excited about Forrest. I think he's got a chance to really help us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.